And then if it were formed out of clay, imagine the soup bowl being squeezed a bit and the contents being folded and fractured and the actual rim of the basin being made much steeper than it originally was. So that basin was quite certainly fractured after it originated. The outside rim of the basin is the ore zone, exposed along Highway 144 between the road and the railroad. The train here is just about to go past the so-called discovery site where the ore was first recognized for what it was. The ore zone is quite narrow. It's never much broader than the outcrop that the train is just passing now. This eventually became the site of the Murray Mine. That was in the late 1880s and the early 1890s. The ore zone is very weathered. It's brown and rotten looking because the iron sulfide, the pyrite in the ore, easily oxidizes. And it produces sulfuric acid, which dissolves the copper, the copper sulfide in the ore, producing a very rotten looking rock. It's only possible to find fresh sulfide samples on newly broken surfaces. These are pits dug in that rotten ore zone. The ore was in fact very easily recognized during the early days of prospecting simply because of that rotten, rusty color on the surface. And in fact, the rusty color is just that, rust. Those early pits now filled with water are in fact quite, quite dangerous. On the sheer surfaces of that discovery site outcrop, one still can see the shiny sulfide ore contrasting with the black rock, but only, remember, on fresh surfaces. Fresh pieces of ore from underground show even more clearly the relationship between the copper nickel sulfide ore and the silicate rock. Cutting the ore through with a diamond saw shows the shiny sulfide in considerable contrast to the rather dark color of the rock. Cutting a thin section shows that relationship even, even better. A thin section cut in the normal fashion and ground so thin that light will pass through it. If we take such a thin section and look at it under the microscope, the silicate mineral grains are quite clear and crystalline. And the sulfide lies between them and is the dark mass in the center. Crossing the polars of the microscope makes that even clearer. But front lighting is much better for distinguishing the various sulfide minerals because there's not just one. Pyrotite an iron, nickel, and cobalt sulfide is an important constituent of the Sudbury ore. Chalcopyrite is the copper sulfide present in the ore. And finally, pentlandite, which is the main source of the nickel, is an iron nickel sulfide. In order to understand how the ore and the rock came to be associated, remember that the atoms when the rock and the sulfide were hot, were vibrating because of the thermal energy, the heat of the mixture. And as it cooled, the atoms were able to form bonds. In the case of the silicate minerals, it was iron and magnesium and oxygen silicate tetrahedra, which formed bonds in order to make such minerals as pyroxene and amphibole and so forth. But there were also bonds forming between sulfur atoms and iron and magnesium. And those bonds formed the sulfide lattices. Here, the pyrite lattice, the large atoms being sulfur and the small ones being iron. And this lattice, repeated, forms the sulfide ore in the rock. And put simply, the metallurgist's job is to 